Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Let us say together, Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, who hast caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant that we may in such wise hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of thy holy word we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which thou hast given us in our Savior Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Be silent before the Lord, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guests. At that time I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their dregs, those who say in their hearts, The Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered, and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind, because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed, for a full, a terrible end he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. The word of the Lord. Let us say together Psalm 90, verses 1 through 12. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the land and the earth were born. From age to age you are God. You turn us back to the dust and say, Go back, O child of earth, for a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You sweep us away like a dream. 
we fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes, in the evening it is dried up and withered. For we consume away in your displeasure, we are afraid because of your wrathful indignation. Our iniquities you have set before you, and our secret sins in the light of your countenance. When you are angry, all our days are gone. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The span of our life is seventy years, perhaps in strength even eighty. Yet the sum of them is but labor and sorrow, for they pass away quickly and we are gone. Who regards the power of your wrath? Who rightly fears your indignation? So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Now concerning the times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written for you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say, there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, as indeed you are doing. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven will be as when a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. 
I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I do not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So, living 2,000 years in the future, the parable of the talents sort of sounds like this guy is going away and he gives some money to these three slaves. It's sort of like you get one silver dollar, you get two silver dollars, you get five silver dollars. And he expects them to invest these coins in something. So I don't know how many dollars you've ever invested one at a time to get some phenomenal return. I certainly haven't, although I'm no financial whiz. But I don't think typically if you invest a silver dollar in some enterprise, you're going to come back with just a tremendous amount of money. A talent, however, is not a coin, nor is it a bill. It's a unit of weight. So a talent is a giant pile of gold or a giant pile of silver. So this is not like dispensing a couple of coins from a coin purse. This is radioing the guy with a forklift to come in with the pallets of gold bullion. So in today's money, you might think about this as he gave to one slave one million dollars, to another slave two million dollars, to a third slave five million dollars. And to us, this sounds kind of absurd and weird, but to people in the first century, it would sound completely crazy. This incredibly wealthy guy is going on a trip and he doesn't leave his money with a banker or with a broker, but with three slaves. People who own nothing, not even their own bodies. People who may have never even touched a coin before, who have no grasp of how to deal with money. And he says, invest this for me. But interestingly, he gave to each of them according to their abilities. Each one had some sort of ability to deal with this money that only the master knew about. So slave number one, he doesn't know the NASDAQ from a hole in the ground, but he puts all the money into the market and in a month's time, he gets not an 8% return, not a 15% return, but a 100% return. So he put in 5 million, he takes out 10 million. Slave number two takes a dart, covers his eyes, throws it at a copy of the Wall Street Journal, hits a random stock symbol, puts all $2 million on XYTR5 or whatever it is. A month later, he has $4 million. These people are the master traders of their generation. They clearly know more about trading than the greatest traders in the history of the world because they were somehow endued with this power by the master, or the master somehow knew something about them before giving them these talents. But somehow, they have just made these phenomenal trades. And each one, we're told, 
enters into the joy of his master. For being responsible and a good steward of a few things, they are given many things to steward. They are raised from lowly slaves to valuable, valued stewards in this master's world. Then we have the third slave. So I, I knew someone who worked with children in the foster system. And he told me that foster kids, they are not bad. They are not heartless or evil or something like this. But they have often been betrayed so many times by grown-ups who weren't behaving like grown-ups. They have been let down. They have been left hungry. They have been left alone. And they have put their trust and their love in so many people and had it repaid with nothing that vulnerability has come to seem like a dangerous thing. So when a good foster family takes a foster child, at times, even though they're just showing love, they're showing generosity, they're showing goodness, all that child can see is another trick, another trap. And that's much like this slave. So the master is amazing. He is entrusting these slaves with millions and millions of dollars, somehow enabling them to make these huge, incredible investments, and then bringing them into his joy. But this third slave doesn't see any of that. He says, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. He didn't trust in the generosity of the master. He didn't trust in the master's invitation or what the master had actually enabled him to do. And so he literally digs a hole in the background. He goes out, he rents a bobcat, he digs this giant hole, and he pushes all the bars of gold into this hole and just buries them. And the master is mystified. I am harsh. I am ungenerous. What is your definition of a generous person? I never even asked you to make a killing in the market. If you had just gone to the bank and put it into a bank account and I would have gotten like, you know, 1.5% back in interest, that would have been something. And look what happened to these other slaves. I gave them my money, they went out and just trusted me, and they've come back with an incredible return, instant millions to enter into my joy. But this slave was paralyzed. He was paralyzed by fear of this master. So we sometimes talk about the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is clean. The fear of the Lord brings forth wisdom. And that is a very different usage of fear than we see in today's passage. So the fear of the Lord that the psalmist talks about, this is this Greek word phobos. It's this feeling of wanting to step back from something. One theologian said, the fear of the Lord, this phobos, this is the feeling that a three-year-old experiences the first time the elevator doors open onto FAO Schwartz. It's not, oh my gosh, this is horrific. It is, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. The, this kind of awe, this phobos, is the feeling of seeing the Grand Canyon for the first time, of seeing a just inestimably beautiful cathedral for the first time. It is just a sense of your own smallness before this kind of grand, incredible hugeness of God. That is the fear of the Lord. This slave does not have the fear of the Lord. Instead, he is just afraid. He is afraid of the master, by extension, we can say, afraid of God. So there are times when we ourselves witness these $5 million slaves, these slaves who are given a lot and without a drop of fear, without a drop of selfishness, they recklessly place it on the market. So on Wednesday, we remembered the generations of men and women who loved their country so much that they were willing to give up literally everything to protect liberty, to protect human rights, not just in our country, but all over the world, from Germany to Japan, from Iraq to Afghanistan. God had given them life and breath and health, love, houses, families, and each one made a decision to invest all of this 
somewhere else. That there was something even more important than guarding these things and preserving these things. It was to liberate our Jewish brothers and sisters from concentration camps or to combat ISIS and the Taliban. All of our veterans who gave up life and liberty to serve others are these incredible examples of selflessness, of fearless service, of investing everything that we have been given without looking back. And there are others. There are other types of $5 million slaves out there. There are those who commit their whole lives to healing or to comforting the sick. Those who devote their whole lives to feeding and caring for the poor. Those who devote their lives to the care and the instruction of children, to building safe houses for people to live in, to the spread of the gospel. There are all sorts of ways in which people take everything that God has given them and invest it towards his purposes. Each of us has been given talents by God. Not talents in the sense of knowing how to yodel or knowing how to juggle, but talents in the biblical sense. These gifts worth inestimable sums. We have the gift of love, of joy, the gifts of our homes and possessions, our wealth, our health, our time. And we are given a choice. We can either take everything that God has given us, dig a hole in the ground, and make sure that no one ever touches it, that it all stays safe and pristinely unused until the end of time. Or we can go crazy. We can be wild and carefree. We can throw a dart at a stock symbol. We can take all that we are and all that we have and put it on red 17, trusting that God, in spite of our unpreparedness, our inability to make these sorts of calculations, in spite of all of our limitations, if we give him all that we are and all that we have, is going to do things through us infinitely beyond what we can ask or even imagine. All through our talents, all through our lives. Next Sunday is our pledge in gathering, but our pledge is not the whole of what we offer to God. Instead, it's a symbol. It's a promise and a prayer that God would enable us to give all of our lives to his service. So you are one of the lucky ones who's been given five talents. You've been given a wealth of money, of time, of goodness, of abilities, of love itself. Maybe that wealth of money is $5 in your bank account. Maybe that wealth of money is five million dollars in your bank account. You have been given something by God, but not to be put in a hole. So what will you do? Will you partner with God, investing all you have and all that you are in his work, trusting that he will act in and through your life? Will you give God your time, Give God your love, give God your patience, give God your energy, give God your wealth, give God everything. Or will you guard your time, guard your wealth? Will you believe that God is a harsh master, reaping where he does not sow and gathering where he does not scatter? Will you trust the goodness of God and invest your talents? Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, 
being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in thy mercy. Give grace, O heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, from Michael, our presiding bishop, Andy, Jeff, Hector, and Kay, our bishops, and the reverend clergy of this parish, active and retired, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Lord, in thy mercy. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Lord, in thy mercy. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially our president, president-elect, and our governor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Lord, in thy mercy. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. Lord, in thy mercy. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor, especially the Spratlin family, C.J. and Felicia Trejo, Linda Lee, Diane Cokemore, and all those whom we now name, either silently or aloud. and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Lord, in thy mercy. We give thee hearty thanks and pray for those who celebrate their birthday this week. Kay Johansson, Betty Stinson, Jean von Hollerich, Terry Kimball, Natasha Craig, Emery Hilliard, Susan Peary, Letta Weir, Nikki Evans, Marion Meadows, Carl Stockbridge. And for those who celebrate their anniversary this week, Larry and Karen Erkeline, Deneen and Anna Ogden, Don and Lois Stewart. Lord, in thy mercy, strengthen and protect our armed forces in every peril of sea, land, and air. Shelter them in the day of battle and in peace keep them safe from all evil. 
endue them with loyalty and courage, and grant that in all things they may serve as in seeing thee. Lord, in thy mercy. We humbly beseech thee, O Lord, to guide and enlighten the staff, teachers, and students of Grace Episcopal School. Lord, in thy mercy. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, especially Phyllis Ross, Donnie Carter, and those whom we now name. Beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Lord, in thy mercy. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the perfect offering for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace. Well, good morning and welcome to our service. Uh, this is the final week before our pledge in gathering. We will have our in person in gatherings next Sunday at both Central and West. It'll be our drive through in gathering. So I hope you'll join us for that. You're also welcome to send in your pledge cards via the mail or just pledge on our website. Whatever way you choose to pledge, the following Sunday after the in-gathering, we'll have a blessing of all our pledges on the altar. I will just say that the pledge is both an opportunity to reflect on all that we're thankful for, all that God has given to us, and to return to God from what he has given us, but it's also that from which we derive everything that happens at grace. So, Unlike some churches, we don't receive aid from the diocese. We don't receive funds from a big endowment. Instead, everything we have just comes from my pledge and from your pledge. 
So if <coughs> there was a year then we just decided to stop pledging, all of us together, then Grace's 155 year run would just end. That's the day we would lock the doors and turn off the lights and that would sort of be it. So I am so grateful for all that Grace is doing in the life of my family, even during this time of distancing and pandemic. Um, and during a normal year, this is sort of the heart of our lives. And I know that's the case for many families at Grace, many individuals at Grace. So if you are able to share with God from what he has given you, we promise to put it to good use. So please do join us in that uh, act of ingathering, either in person, via the mail, or uh, online. That is next Sunday. We have our usual round of four o'clock services. We have our Bible study on Mondays from 1.30 to 2.30, and I hope you will join us this week. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty 
that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, creator of the light and source of life, who hast made us in thine image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify. With thy word and Holy Spirit, these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, are bound in duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our unrighteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ.